Welcome to Just Talking Tactical. Hi, I'm Irfan, and today our segment is about plate carriers and how to use them properly. So we've got three plate carriers today. Two are from First Pier and one is from Cry Precision. We have two maritime plate carriers and one ground hybrid plate carrier, right? Okay, so difference being, for these two, they have different materials. As you can see for the First Pier Maritime Plate Carrier, it uses a trailer bark material. So this material is meant to not absorb moisture or water, right? If you go in the water and you, you know, you walk out or you climb up onto a ship or a vessel, it will not absorb and you don't gain extra weight, right? For cry precision, they went through a different approach um, with the JPC 2.0 Maritime. Instead of using trailer bark, they, they're using a uh, mesh type material. So with this material, it, it's the same as the trail bark. It doesn't absorb water as much and you won't feel heavy as you step out of the water. So for ground usage, most of the time we have people manufacturing, most companies manufacture with things like Cordura. So for this, we have 500 denier Cordura, right? There are a lot of companies that still do a 1000 denier Cordura, but we are trying to get into the realm of uh, light plate carriers. So what we regularly recommend is a 500 denier plate carrier. Okay, so there are three types of plate shapes. There is the uh, sappy cut, which is small arms protective insert. So basically it is a rectangular cut, often with a curvature, right, to fit your body size. And it has two uh, chamfers on the side to allow you to actually have a more articulated movement for your arms, right? Um, there is a different cut called the uh, swimmer cut, which is about the same as a sappy cut, but it gives you even more articulation for your arms because it has an even steeper chamfer to the sides. Okay, so the third cut is the MBEV. MBEV stands for Modular Body Armor Vest. So it's similar to the, the sappy cut, but instead of a chamfer, it's more of a rectangular piece. So you'll see that the plate carrier will be more of a rectangular shape rather than with a chamfer on the, the top edges. Okay, so between the MBEV and the sappy cut carriers, right, um, there are people who prefer MBEV because it has more coverage. This tends to be more towards the uh, law enforcement side because they do a lot of raiding. So they prefer a bit more um, coverage since they're very CQB centric. For the military, we prefer a bit more um, articulation of the arms. You need a bit more space so you can properly shoulder your stock and it doesn't get in the way. Sometimes when you put it, uh, when there's too many things happening on your, around your shoulder area, you tend to get a, an unstable footprint. For today, we have two different types of uh, attachments. We have the regular Velcro type, which I think most plate carriers use. Um, problem with most Velcro plate carriers is that when you put it back on, it's never the same. You always get it at a different angle. You can never get a very consistent attachment. With the first pair of plate carriers, they use a tube system. So with the tube system, it's an easy don off and don on. Very easy, works with one hand. The tube itself is very tough and makes it a lot easier. Say if you are uh, a casualty, right? You got shot, it penetrated the, the plate, right? And your medic is supposed to treat you for wounds. So if you're using one of these, most of the time, these kind of plate carriers will have some sort of a quick detach strap. So when you release it, it will come off, one of the uh, straps will come off and you probably won't be able to put it back on because it's not designed to be uh, quickly uh, reattached. For the tubes, on the other hand, you can actually reattach it really quick. Say you're hit in this side of the plate, right? The medic takes it off, treats your wound, puts it back on, and then you're good to go. Okay, so the tube system is a little bit more expensive. You get what you pay for. They both work, but the tube system gives you a bit of an edge because you don't want to be exposed as you get dragged away after being treated by a medic. Okay, so we have two ways of attaching pouches. We have laser cut molly and regular molly. Regular molly uses webbing, right? So you have pieces of webbing that have been stitched onto the top of a plate carrier. And to a certain degree, this is quite a strong uh, system. Right? The only problem with this is that you're adding more material 
and it's a bit heavier. So for our first pair system, they use a laser cut molly system. They use the same material for their plate bags and use laser to cut slits into the material, right? So this doesn't add weight to the system. It may not seem as strong as a regular webbing type molly, but it reduces weight by 50%. And by using a Velcro system on the other side, on the inside, it actually allows for more uh, contact to the surface. So you're actually using, your pouch is actually using the whole uh, surface behind it to, to keep it in place, right? It's gonna be strong, it's gonna be light. So First Pier calls the system the 612 system, right? So they have a 6.9 system as well. So 6.12 on the pouches, they actually have like a flap. Instead of a full-on webbing at the rear of the pouches, they have flaps with Velcro on the rear, right? So these flaps actually attach the rear to the inside of the plate bags and they give even more contact surface to strengthen the attachment to the, uh, the plate bags. Right. So this being a plate carrier and plate carriers being PPEs or personal protective equipment, we are going to rely our lives on it. It's a critical piece of kit and you generally want to buy something from a brand that's reliable or has a track record of manufacturing good and tough durable plate carriers. So there are brands that manufacture plate carriers or uh, plate carriers. You have a lot of brands nowadays from China, from Hong Kong and they basically uh, manufacture these plate carriers for airsoft and crossfit for exercising. So we're not sure whether they're able to withstand the uh, stresses of deployment and for full daily duty usage. So there have been uh, examples of uh, plate carriers from this, from this uh, certain companies that have failed. Things like their plate, uh, their cummerbunds have uh, started to sag or they just don't fit properly. So your plate carrier kind of swings around your body, right? Um, plate bags tearing up, straps tearing up. So the thing is that these things are designed for, for play, right? You want to buy something that's designed to protect you and to last as long as you last. Which is why we buy from brands which are um, trusted by active duty personnel. These brands are known to last and they're not going to give up on you. So I'm going to show you how to put on your plate carrier. We're going to do this with the first spear maritime plate carrier. Right, so what you do is you hold on to the front plate bag, right? Swing it to the rear, put it over your head, take one of the paracords from one of the cummerbunds, slide the tube over the female portion, and do it on the other side. So with this, you get a very consistent uh, attachment spot, right? So sappy plates are supposed to sit between your collarbone and the bottom of your rib cage. Right? This is because you have your heart, your vital organs are all in this spot here and the plates are generally designed to cover this portion. Right? So if you were to wear it at that uh, right height, you might not actually be protecting yourself properly and the whole idea behind wearing a personal protective equipment is to actually wear something that will actually protect yourself. So by wearing it that low, you're actually compromising yourself after buying good equipment. Hey guys, that's the end of our segment. Get good kit, take care of your kit, and your kit will take care of you. Alright, like and subscribe our, to our channel, and we've got more content coming up soon. Stay safe out there.